Hi, we're the Wombats and we're here chatting with Milky. Today I had a big idea. I jumped up and I grabbed the coin. I drowned out the noise. There's no room for mistakes. Yeah, to be honest, like <clears throat> We, we usually come to Australia quite often, uh, usually once a year, and it's been four years since the last show we did in Australia, and we, we were missing it, uh, I guess, uh, a lot. And to finally be here and play the new album and see people in the room smiling and dancing and having a good time has been um, amazing, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, it's been insane, and I would say our stoke levels are at like 10. I feel like whenever we get on stage together um, or in a practice room um, before long there's like the energy levels go up and we kind of feed off each other and the music kind of like pushes us on and that's what just naturally comes out. Um, couple that with the fact that we had two years of a pandemic where we couldn't actually do what we love and what we've been doing for so long. Um, there was definitely a lot of pent up kind of uh, frustration and angst and you know that you just want to kind of get off your chest and like have that live experience with with people in a room who all know the words as well um, and as Todd said before like with especially having done an album during the pandemic we hadn't had a chance to actually like play them live and that's kind of the moment where all the pieces fall into place and like it makes the most sense um, so it didn't take much for us apart from a little bit of practicing like we all got in a room together figured out you know how to play the, the songs and make them work live and then the rest was just like the crowd kind of just get you up to such an insane level of adrenaline that um, yeah you just get carried along with that buzz and the oh, well and then you mentioned lethal combo but like the the, the down moments like you know um, most of our songs are pretty upbeat so obviously when when designing or you know coming up with the set list it was it's it's all just about pacing that you kind of over the years you you instinctively know kind of like where you need to like hit certain points and you know you want to make it as dynamic as possible as you do within songs as well um so you know you see a set as just just like an extent like one long song that just can't be flat um so the problem is that we haven't got many slow songs yeah so, so it's it's always like you know you, you kind of like have one moment as like lethal combination is pretty much the only part of the set where you can relax maybe a method for 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 about like yeah, a minute and a half and then and then it's all kind of like the rest of it is pretty relentless yeah that's how we like it ever since we started touring again um back in january the the crowd's reactions and general like vibe in the room again it's hard to know whether it's because of the two years we all went through or whether it actually is happening but it does feel like there's a sort of 10 20 percent lift in energy and yeah emotion like that we've had people say you know they've been crying multiple times and that kind of sense of relief of going back to normality i think is um it like is all pervading in the in the room it's more energy both in within the crowd and within us as well i think like the sort of, and and also how you how you f what, yeah the, you feel about it as well because as you say it's it, it, especially in the beginning when we were like doing the first few shows back it was it was quite emotional wasn't it because yeah. it was like at some point through the pandemic we were all thinking like oh maybe we will not do, ever or never do this again in the same sort of way that we've done it in the past and to finally be able to do it was like yeah it was quite moving wasn't it yeah, I mean, our um, our monitor engineer Edgy, uh, when we first did a, a rehearsal, he actually shed a tear when we were playing Greek tragedy. <laughs> um, but it was that kind of thing of just n not knowing it was going to happen. Um, yeah, it's it's been a good year. Playing live for us has always been one of the most important aspects of what we do, um, and we're so lucky with our crowds, like everywhere in the world but like Australia really is kind of a, a unique place for us to play um, you know we were saying the other day we played Melbourne and you know in this huge like Australian tennis open arena kind of thing um, which as a tennis fan is al already like really cool but then the fact that there's loads of people in there like on each other's shoulders singing along um, you know that is where you get your m 
main kind of goosebump moments uh, as a musician I'd say um, we always want like to t- our shows to feel like a party you know like it's a place where people can come and kind of like l- leave the, the yeah away. yeah dance the blues away yeah like you forget about like any problems or any other shit that you have going on in your life and kind of forget about it and have fun basically which is again even all the more needed since the pandemic like that kind of washing that slate clean and like starting again um it's been yeah it's been amazing i mean I've, you know we love being in the studio as well and recording and writing um that's really cathartic and therapeutic as well but um yeah there's nothing quite like a live show what was quite nice with this um this album uh, is that we like the first week of release we actually got to play the whole album from start to finish we've never done that on an, any album and it was it was it was nice to actually you know just get to to see the reaction to every single song and i guess like there was definitely some moments where it was like you know um you know people even like some of the like maybe maybe lesser known songs that people were reacting to really well you know like there was worry i remember like oh this, this is the last song on the album but somehow people you know reacted really well to that and even um what about method to the madness when we get like that sort of circle pits going when before it kicks in when people sort of like they they, they you know they, they figured out that you know this it's it's all this like you know slow kind of like slow building and then it's kind of like in the end when it kicks off and everyone's just jumping into each other like so proper yeah. like circle pits I, d- I wasn't not that i wasn't surprised but um because in our minds i think like when we were making that um methods of the madness like when it got to the end we were all kind of like moshing around like thinking oh imagine what this is this is going to kick off live so we had that you know you can have an idea in your mind of what it's going to be like with the crowd and when it actually does happen like we're in santiago chile um a couple of months ago and like the whole crowd like sat down in the build section at the end and we were like what's going on here and then all of a sudden like when it kicks off and um, they all jumped up and like threw their water bottles or whatever like and, and there was just this like chaos chaotic scene um and that was like definitely a snapshot of what it looked like in our heads when we were making it so um yeah it's it's been it's great been i'm trying to since though i feel like that should have been like a it should be a th- i always try and get i'm like try and do this at the start of it and i think people you know they're like is this a hand movement we're supposed to follow or so if we can put it out there anyone watching this if you come and see us live try and get everyone to sit down in the build section at the end of methods of the madness that would be great thank you <laughs> I guess you know it wouldn't be a one batch show without let's dance to joe division um greek tragedy and turn, turn or but then kill the director like yeah but four, then. four yeah probably have to go for those four like um they're the ones that i would say well in australia tokyo like that's you know in terms of the crowds going off you wouldn't want to not have that in the set because it's a real moment favorite songs to play I was it's always great to play songs that get a great reaction but then it's really nice to play songs like people don't change yeah. you know because it has a very different feel to a lot of the other songs and it's a, also a bit of a you know so, you know song we can sit back a little bit and it's, it's a little bit more like slow paced and relaxed mm. um, and the same with method to the madness it, it, it feels completely different uh, for me, it's often like the songs that are, that feel different, <laughs> that kind of like feels the most exciting to play. Yeah, because uh, in terms of like what what we and, and musicians in general, I guess it's often the newer ones that like you know they feel they're a bit like fresher and da 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 da. But in terms of like what we can't leave out of a set, I think yeah, it's the classics. <laughs> I, f- I feel like for us. Um, it was probably more important like in the early days for like the the sort of playing live which feeds into this how you end up making the songs i think like um you know when the f- the first batch of songs that we sort of made as a band um they weren't 
necessarily as energetic and stuff because we hadn't played live. We didn't, we had like, we had fun in the practice room and stuff, but it was a slightly different energy. And then the more we played live, the, you know, the faster the songs got, the more energy that they got, that Merv's voice changed over like the first probably six months to a year. You can listen to like, uh, we got like, really re released some B sides. Uh, it's called B to Z sides and you can check it out. Yeah. Can, it's, it's, it's all like in the, the order of when they were made and you can, yeah. you can start like we're hearing Merv's voice being really nice so really like kind of like it's soft softer. soft and, and then it gets like stronger and stronger as you get through the <laughs> the album basically and yeah. then on album two it's like you know it's, it's more like shouty but he, no even bef I know, like even before the f you mean EP too yeah because yeah, even before the first album um, we developed the sound over the first couple of years and then it was like oh right there's the wombat sound so the live element did feed into that but I think since then um it's, it's more like we finish touring live and then we almost want to like go away from what we've been playing live all the time. That's how it seems to have worked each album, you know, you suddenly like, oh, I've just been playing this the whole time and you want to try something completely different and we love so many different like genres of music. It's I like, we can definitely like influence how we approach the song in the studio. Like, you know, like, oh, it would be great to do this here because in, in a live setting this will work great or whatever, you know. Um, so there's definitely moments in the studio where that does influence how how we, or like, you know, the creative decisions or whatever. But a lot of the time it's more just about having fun in the studio, like, and not think about that, you know, like, and then deal with the, 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 um, the kind of trouble of, you know, like, how to solve it live later down the line. So we've all got um, various influences, but I would say that some of the common ground we found in early days was like Smashing Pumpkins, um, Radiohead, um, Elliot Smith. Uh, you know, there was like, we're 90s kids, I guess, so there's quite a bit of like grunge and um, guitar music in general. Um, but then. A lot of Britpop. Um, yeah. Definitely a lot of Britpop, like Blur and, you know. Even Oasis, you know, like all that kind of like, or Supergrass, you know, like, um, I guess radio kind of fits into that sort of um, box, at least in the early days. Um, but yeah, a lot of that. Mm. And, and then, then... And then new metal. But then obviously, yeah, but like, <laughs> so yeah, I'd definitely grown up on a diet of like Nirvana and... Um, yeah, D Dave Grohl was one of the reasons why I wanted to play drums when I was like 12 or something. So um, that fed in loads of American bands. Like, I, you know, I used to love... Green Day, Blink, all those like and play along. That's like, kind of how I learned to play. But then, but then, all like I was in a classic uh, covers band as well, and we used to do like Beatles, The Eagles, Cream, Queen, you know, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, so kind of learnt like a big mishmash of all of it, and then I did like a bit of bit of new metal, like Deftones and System of a Down early stuff. Um, so it's just a really weird. Higgledy Piggledy mix, and I was in a folk trio as well, and loved like Grand Parsons and Towns Van Zant and Bob Dylan and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, and, then, <laughs> and then Todd loves loads of like electronica, yeah, and loads of electronica. Um, I mean, it's kind of started with Air, the French band, and that kind of opened the the gates of like <laughs> you know programming breaks up in the Norwegian band, uh, Todd Turge, uh, Todd Taddy, as we call him. Uh, yeah, there's loads of electronic music as well, and then hardcore was like had a long period of, and I still enjoy that, you know, like Refused and Blood Brothers and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it's such a mixed bag of of styles and and influences uh, lingering around. Yeah, I think that I think that's like you know, that I think that's really important to have. Like, like it's not it's not like you're oh yeah I only listen to that and that's why you kind of like. 
you know, take uh, your influences from because then it can easily turn into like a carbon copy or like, uh, or a, you know, like a similar version to what you're trying to to make or whatever. But um, yeah, I don't know. But I th- yeah, I, th- I think that's what kind of um, makes it more interesting when you with with bands in general when you've got a few different kind of perspectives and sounds coming together, which hopefully merges to create something different. Um, and we all like pop stuff as well. You know, there's definitely like a it's serve the song. We want the song to be as like good and well structured as possible and but keep you on your toes and twist things around as much as we can. I mean to be honest, I'm kind of I love uh Bonnie Ver and and Big Red Machine and like everything he does basically, so I guess somehow that with with Bonnie Ver would be pretty cool. Um any collaborations I mean if we, if we did a collab with Daft Punk or something like that that would be pretty cool <sighs> that's so cliche to say I mean I suppose I'd have to say um, never mind Nirvana really just because um, in terms of going back to the moment that I was like I really want to play the drums um, which has obviously changed my life um, then that would be the catalyst for me so yeah I'll say that album <laughs> to me that's an impossible question I mean I, I don't know what made you want to start playing the bass was there a, was there one the no it was the, the, the kind of like the, the, mo- the band that you the motorcycle really like got me into like alternative music but I was I was already playing bass at that point it was more it was Green Day Dookie uh, it's definitely up there Offspring Smash uh, it was a lot of skate punk, that kind of like stuff. Mill and Colin, I remember that being a thing. Weezer, Blue Album, it's definitely up there as well. I was playing along to that and had a period of like really getting into the hair metal, metal y kind of stuff, you know, like Def Leppard. <laughs> I was like playing along to that <laughs> and Aerosmith. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> so, uh, still, like, I must still enjoy it. Like, it's, it's good fun listening to that music, but it's, uh, it's you know production wise and stylistically maybe not uh, what we're aiming for at the moment but it's uh, yeah it was it was definitely like thing yeah, mixture things of mixture of all those things that kind of got me into uh, wanting to be in a band I suppose well the best film I've seen in many many years uh, was everything everywhere all at once which um, is just been just come out recently uh, mind-blowingly good film uh, if you haven't seen it honestly check it out uh, so creative uh, just so nuts and so representative of the world we live in it feels like um, and a great look at depression and all the rest of it like I feel like that would have been such a cool film to soundtrack because it's um, it's nuts <laughs> yeah yeah, but this is like this. This uh, lost in translation. I think it has got that. I mean, I love the soundtracks yeah. for it, and it, that kind of like it's such an important part of the the feel of the the film as well. And it's one of my favorite films. Uh, obviously, it's you know it's not like to actually make the the soundtrack for it, it will be impossible to 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 make any you know better or whatever. But it's like yeah, that that will be my answer. Maybe. Miley Cyrus, I have no real relation to Hannah Montana. Like, I, I don't know. I've heard the name, but I don't know what is that. Is it not the same? Is she the same person? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See, I do know. Trick, trick question. Trick, uh, you can't get us. Yeah. It must be some Norwegian song, some nursery rhyme of some sort. Yeah, you loved um, Aha, Take on Me. Nice. Um, yeah, um, I think it's gonna have to be Brian Adams. Um, everything I do, I do it for you. I think, it, yeah, it came out in like '91, and it was like I was seven, and it was me and my sister used to sing that song all the time. Um, so I'll go with that. The what the first I remember going to was um, an Irish artist called Mary Black uh, being supported by the Rankin family at the Philharmonic Hall in Liverpool um, and they're both yeah I absolutely love both of their music um, and they're another kind of family staples and, and I remember absolutely loving it and actually probably you know straight away 
everyone was dancing and all the rest of it and it felt it was like wow I'd love to be a part of this you know I just remember that feeling of like feeling so at home there and just so happy it was like you know yeah maybe live music's the way forward um, I was lucky enough to be taken to the Rolling Stones concert in 97 by my uncle and that was my first ever gig and it was mind-blowing <laughs> it was the Bridges Bridges to Babylon tour I think in an, it was in Oslo mine was um, Bon Iver in Edinburgh um, I I got the train up there on my own um, it was like a midweek gig and it was in between tours and no one else was available to come and I was like I'm just gonna go it's the only time I can see him um, and it just it was like goosebumps for the first four songs I haven't I haven't felt that before um, and he like the the arrangements of the songs were all slightly different and like it was all yeah it's just the creativity in, in that like project is next levels it's difficult to, to pick like one specific gig because there's so many different types of gigs but I remember seeing gorillas thinking that was amazing that was in Lowlands festival in Netherlands you know how they with all the projections and just all the musicians on stage and, and it just sounded incredible I loved seeing refused in like a 1500 capacity then you like the energy in that room the, I was in in the mosh pit I, I never go in the mosh pit I was in the mosh pit and I sprained my ankle <laughs> <laughs> mine was reckless by Brian Adams um, on cassette I think it was Aerosmith get a grip yeah it was CD on a CD Backstreet Boy Spice Girl I want it that way it's kind of my karaoke classic. Oh, <laughs> Old Spice! <laughs> Old Spice! <laughs> Real Spice. <laughs> Four Spice. Well, I suppose you can't really go... Uh, it's got It's got to be the Beatles, really. Um, being, from Liverpool. being from Liverpool as well, but like the influence they've had on popular culture and music, full stop. Um, is, yeah, it's pretty hard to beat them, I think. It's all going to be okay. Don't sweat it. The moment I knew I wanted to be a musician was when I was playing um, flute in a little orchestra when I was about seven. Um, and I just, I used to love making sounds with other humans. Um, so, yeah. I, I don't know ex the exact moment, but in in... In, in our house um, my dad was playing piano all the time and that was kind of like the the catalyst for like you know me getting into um, um, music in the first place but I was in the musical theatre and I was doing cello as well and I guess like being in the musical theatre was kind of like actually being on stage and really enjoying that um, I guess that was maybe the moment when I'm sort of like okay I want to do something like on stage and I really enjoy playing cello and I guess that kind of like was the um, sort of reason I then ended up playing bass um, when I was like about 13. <laughs>